Welcome to New Hope. Today we are going to be talking about the parable of the unheard God from the Gospel of the Washington Post. What kind of life are we living when we can just rush by the most eloquent sound performed by the most renowned artist? Who have we become when we're able to so quickly bristle by and bypass genius and be blind to utter brilliance and numb to the creative energy and power of any of life's moments. How in the world does that happen? And why in the world have I let, have we let it happen? Why in the world, how could we ever ignore God the maker of everything, the source of all beauty, everything that fills the cosmos, the giver of every good gift, including the gift of renowned violinist Joshua Bell. A couple years ago, the Washington Post comes up with an idea. Let's get the greatest violinist we know of, Joshua Bell, dress him up as a street musician, put him in the L'Enfant subway station in Washington, D.C., and let's see what happens, a bit of a social experiment. What happened surprised everybody, because for the most part, Bell, the greatest violinist they could think of, was totally ignored. Joshua Bell playing the greatest violin pieces they could imagine, masterpieces, on an, a priceless Stradivarius right there before them, and everybody, vroom, 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 off to work. This guy commands huge ticket prices when he's down the road in the concert hall, and nobody, very few, minute percentage of the people of the thousand or so that went by stopped and heard it. They all missed it. When I read that story, someone sent it to me two weeks ago, I couldn't help but draw the parallel to what we talk about here and to God. How God surrounds us with music and fills the universe with brilliance and glory And his creation, his whole creation, is a theater for his glory and how we miss it. Are so blind and so lost and so in a stupor that we don't even see it. The Washington Post article asked Joshua Bell, post-performance, how it felt being ignored, and he said, quote, I'm surprised at the number of people who don't pay attention at all, as if I'm invisible. Because you know what? I'm making a lot of noise. And I hear him say it, but it's like I'm also hearing him say it. I'm surprised at the number of people who don't pay attention at all, as if I'm invisible. Because you know what? I'm making a lot of noise.
Last week, I was in the States for a whole bunch of meetings, and after one meeting, some people said, hey, let's go out to a pub and grab a beer, and I just preached on God's gift of alcohol, so how could I not? And, <laughs> but normally, this is me. I'm, I, I, I want to get up early. I want to think about this for the book. I want to be ready for this meeting. It's 1030. I, I should crash, right? And I'm trying not to be so ordinary all the time and boring. So I said, sure, let's go. So we go out, we have one beer, some snacks, get back to the hotel lobby at 12.30, 12 o'clock, and then we sit there for an hour and a half talking about stuff and talking about our church and New Hope and what we're doing here. And this guy's like all ears, and he's adding to the vision, and it was just one of the best conversations I've ever had. And near the end of the conversation, as I'm trying to sum up, and we're talking about this idea of God moving everywhere in the world, I said, if you had any idea, we're sitting in a hotel lobby, three of us, one lady on her laptop over there, nobody there, Deadsville at 1.30 in the morning, I said, if you have any idea how much glory and power and beauty fills this moment. If we only had eyes to see how present God is to the gift of all of this, we'd be blown away and on our knees. If we only had any idea. In the nature that surrounds you, I woke up wondering about premature Christmas this morning. Come in, prepared to whine about it to somebody. And the first person I start to whine to about it says, no, 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 I have friends who have a friend, their parents over from a place where it doesn't snow, and they were hoping and praying that it would snow in Calgary so this family could see snow for the first time in their lives. And I just laughed at her infantile enthusiasm. <laughs> in the person that's sitting beside you, more glory more glory in her, more of God's goodness in your life because of her, more beauty, strength, maternal in her than you could ever imagine if you only had eyes to see, really see what God has gifted you with. In the things that she, we, them produce, cultural products that sport and science and art and the academy God speaking and revealing Himself everywhere. The last cue that struck me in the parable of the unheard God was how the editors of the Washington Post totally misread what was going to happen. In the article it says, in preparing for this event, editors at the Post magazine discussed how to deal with likely outcomes. The most widely held assumption was that there could, could well be a problem with crowd control. In a demographic as sophisticated as Washington, the thinking went, several people would surely recognize Bell. Nervous, what-if scenarios abounded. As people gathered, what if others stopped to see what the attraction was? Word would spread through the crowd, cameras would flash, more people would flock to the scene, rush hour pedestrian traffic would back up, tempers would flare, the National Guard would be called in, tear gas, rubber bullets, etc. And I laughed at it. But I cried at that because the God who made everything is speaking and singing and playing in the world, and this reaction isn't happening. And why isn't this happening? Why, John, is this not happening in your life more? We are meant to see God in all things all the time. That's what creation was meant to be. And that's what Earth 2.0 will one day be. Pandemonium, crowd control. Have you seen? Have you heard? Have you felt? Do you know? Everything, all things, all the time, worship. 